Okay, so we're gonna take a look at what's new in Mario 7. And there's also gonna be a boxing match. Okay, so let's start this by loading a USD file now here. So I'm just gonna browse to my USD file here that I prepared. It's actually a uh, an asset coming from a Gnomon workshop masterclass that I did where I actually used some of these workflows. I didn't use USD at that time, but I used baking. We can see here in the new revamp USD loader, we have essentially a hierarchy for the asset. I would love to see a actually new USD viewer here as well. So I can actually see if I, for example, hide this pneumatic group. What will that do before I actually import it? On this side here, if I would have variants, they would come up here. Unfortunately, in this version of the beta, there was a slight bug when it comes to updating the interface that I stumbled upon. And obviously it goes with any beta software. Don't use it in production. This is for testing only and a feature preview. And I can't guarantee that all of these features are gonna be exactly the same on launch because there might be refinements from here and until then. But in this case here, I'm just going to import the model and I'm going to use this UV set ST. You can switch here. In my case here, I have two UV sets. This ST is the full UV set and I made a cut down version and that one is ST1. And that's just a single UDIM instead of 42 UDIMs. I'm going to import the 42 UDIMs in my case here. So ST here. If you hit this button here, we can enable create selection groups per mesh so i'm gonna do that as well and we can it's gonna be selection groups coming up here with all of this create new project this is how it looks when it comes into mori i turned on my wireframe so we can see the, the mesh here and this is the uv layout we can see here onto this asset and this is also what we're gonna bake against just to check that loading different uv set actually works we can quickly do here a add version reload this one and say st1 switch over to this one once it's imported object Let's go here and say Gatling Mari 1. Obviously nothing changed here in my viewport because it's the same model, but the UV will be totally different. You can see here, this is just a zero to one UDIM. I essentially just scaled everything down by 0.1. Now let's focus on the bakery and who doesn't love baking, especially when this icon here looks like a Neapolitan style pizza oven. Yeah, so we're greeted with this new interface here. This is where we can add bake passes. So you add them here from this add bake item and the use of suspects is ambient occlusion, thickness, and curvatures. I'm gonna make them here 4K, why not? And you can do up to 32K and this is gonna bake it here on my uh, RTX 3090 graphics card. And you have to specify bake to and bake from mesh. If you have a high res mesh, you can, for example, bake out normals and displacement and you can actually point here to a uh, source mesh from disk here. In my case, I'm gonna use the same input and output mesh. It's the same mesh. Let's take a look here. So you have here on this side, you can start a preview. So for example, if I go here to my ambient occlusion, you can say here, do you wanna have medium high preview? And you can hit the play button and it starts to give you a preview of what you see there. And now you can essentially here tweak here in in real time you can select here in my case i am using a cage here uh, give me the best result at the moment the closest here if i go to this one at this time gives a bit strange result here so the cage and obviously this might change until the final release cage distance i found 0.1 here was a, a pretty good result for uh, my case here. I'm gonna bake to geo channels. I wanna preview the thickness. This doesn't look like a thickness, so we need to increase the, the distance here. Let's see here, something like that. Curvature, let's see here. Uh, let's let's bake this and hit the, the bake one here. Let's see here what happens. So it's, it's pretty fast. I'm gonna send it to now to my graphics card. And remember, I'm actually recording on my graphics card now as well. So there's a slight performance hit when recording through Camtasia here. So you see here, it's, it's baking 4K, 42 UDIMs. It's baking ambient occlusion, thickness and curvature. And all of these here, we're, we're now 36% through that. And that that's pretty impressive speed. 
And I actually did very extensive benchmarking. I actually baked, this one is 42. I made a, an asset with 170 UDIMs and it was super fast. And uh, I even uh, baked it out in 32K. That's ridiculous <laughs> amount of pixels. And I wouldn't recommend anyone working in 32K because then you essentially have planned your project completely wrong in the first place. But nevertheless, you can bake in 32K if you want to. I wouldn't recommend it, put it that way. Okay, so there we go. And all that talking and we can see here post-process and now it generates the geo channels. You can see them being generated here on the side over there. And there we go. I'm going to close the bakery and now actually jump into my node graph and just drop down a geo channel node like so and look through this one. There we go. Ambient occlusion. Let's take thickness. That's my thickness bake and my curvature. Yeah, awesome. It's really nice. And the good thing about this is you can go in here. And now let's say that you want to remember this. You can save out the preset and you can load back presets. You can also have multiple, for example, ambient occlusion close or something AO close details here by, for example, to, to do another type of pass. There's a lot of feature requests coming from the, the Discord and the forums. And one of my one is to have bias, for example, up vectors and, and all of that for to make like dirt passes. And I'm very, very, very happy to see this uh, being developed by Foundry. And I'm also expecting this drop down list here to expand when it comes to more exotic bait passes down the line. So let's have a boxing match now between Mari and Substance Painter. 42 Udim Ambient Occlusion back in three rounds. Introducing in the red corner, Mori. In the blue corner, we have Substance Painter. Three rounds, Ambient Occlusion 4K back. So it will be very interesting to see how this new contender is gonna stack up against the former heavyweight champion of the world. And we can see here, Mori is actually gaining speed over Substance Painter. Is this what I see? Is this reality? Is the former heavyweight champion of the world lacking in speed when it comes to Path Trace Ambient Occlusion? We can see here that uh, Mori is actually gaining and will Substance Painter be able to catch up? It doesn't look like it. It's a very nightmarish situation and yes! And the first round goes to Mori. 4K baking in Ambient Occlusion in 32 seconds. Round 2, 8K bake! And the second round here opens up strong. Mori is still here in 8K mode, gaining quite considerable speed over the former heavyweight champion of the world, Substance Painter. Will this be another walkover for Mari over Substance Painter? It looks like it, and here comes the trial. Yes, it's a very interesting match. So 1 minute and 45 seconds against 4 minutes and 26 seconds. Round 3, 16k, face! So in this third round, it looks like Mari won on technical knockout. The 16k was not available. The bell rang at 10 minutes and 19 seconds, and long live the new heavyweight champion of the world! Okay, so let's take a look at some node graph improvements now. And first off here, if I select one of these nodes here, you can see now we get actual highlighting. So this is really good. I'm just gonna go into this dirt color gizmo here, and we can take a look here what happens. So inside this gizmo here, I have a lot of nodes. So if I select this, for example, this contrast node here, the dirt contrast histogram node, and then double click on it. So whenever I double click on a node, it's going to pop out here on the top. And we will also get, you can see here, you kind of get a focus around here, this node. So it's, it's much easier now to see here what you select and also what node you have selected here in the node properties get highlighting around it here so that's one of the new features it makes it more easy to understand what's going on in the node properties another thing here is new ways to to sever essentially these noodles here for example something that i use a lot in solaris is the y key and we get this essentially we can cut now noodles by doing that and that's really cool another requested way to disconnect nodes is to actually shake here now so you can you can now shake if you come from shake do you remember you could shake nodes 
Next up here, if I hit the tab button here, we get this new create menu. It looks a bit different. You can see here you have a drop down. And first off here, you're going to see the most recent nodes that you used. You can also hear dock favorites here. So if you hit this little pin icon, uh, you get a list of nodes. That if you want to pin them, you can see here uh, I pin my histogram scan and some other node here. Whenever I go over here, hit on tab, I can now uh, get them here ready to go here. There's also something called Fuzzy Finder, and it tries to, even if you just MBC, multi-channel bake point, it tries to essentially find, even if you don't spell it 100% correct, find something closest to those letters you have. So it's quite easy to, to get to the nodes. If you have a vague idea what, what you're searching for, you will probably find it there a lot easier. Let's take a look at new nodes now. So we have Camouflage Bubbles. There's Camouflage. Yeah, so that's the Camouflage. Here is the Bubble node. Let's take a look at this one. So we have Scale here. Hollow Jitter. Offset. Yeah, so you have to play around here and depending on what you're gonna use this for, maybe it's like a, like a bump or a, a data screen or something that you wanna create like a, a pattern for or some or some random stuff. Another really in interesting feature, especially for studios, is the project auto backup. And this is something I'm looking forward to uh, using in production. What you do here, if you're in a pipeline, you have a lot of APIs to set up automation about this. But if you are a home user like I am here in my home studio, if I go here to settings, you have a backup path. In my case here, I'm just going to point this to my NAS drive so we can see here how this works in, in reality here. I'm just going to take my this uh, Mori location and I have a backup folder. Let's go and create a new folder and say Gatling. I'm going to choose this one, hit OK and hit save here. And I'm going to do some um, work, then I'm going to save it again. So we can see here how this project auto backup works. Essentially, when in Mori here, if I go into preferences and have my auto save here, every time it auto saves, it's gonna essentially stream to another location. And this doesn't need to be on a local machine where Mori has its SSD drive and the scratch files. In if you're in a studio, you can set up ways to back up to a secure location. And this one has really been a bit hard to do unless you have like custom proprietary scripts. And I believe I believe this new uh, auto backup was developed in collaboration with Weta. So the previous Weta collaborations, for example, like the baking improvements has been really successful. So I hope this one has the same uh, benefits for us in the pipeline as well. So here's the changes I made. Looking here in the no graph, I just added an additional uh, uh, splatter textures here for around the wheels. And I also tied in some more um, dirt break up on any color map. Essentially, if I go to my color map and looking here on, on its own here, we can see here, I just added some, some extra values here. Let's say that this is essentially not what we want. We realized two days ago, we had something. We want to roll back to this and I can actually do that. We can go here now. You have now here under restore and here you actually can see the different restores available and you also get here this is the first this is the first time i saved that's essentially the first time i saved and you can see it looks a bit different and then i did some stuff here and there's a few saves i added some decals but let's say that we want to revert to the first one here i'm just gonna do that here now and now it's gonna restore it's gonna be restored to to that state here now when i open without those changes that i made afterwards and there you have it that's the Essentially the first save I did. And all of this was streaming from my SSD drive where I have uh, the scratch disk onto the NAS drive that's on a totally different machine through the ne network. And it's open and you don't feel anything in Mori. It's, it's happening essentially behind the scenes. Even when I close Mori, it's, this process is going on under the hood from what I understand because the, you can see the files starting to slowly build up. So each save is essentially streamed to this location. And uh, using the API, I imagine we can do even more if you have a pipeline team to can implement stuff. On the shader side, we have two new shaders. So Autodesk Standard Surface and V-Ray 
6 here. You obviously have the, the old shaders here as well. There's also VFX Ref Platform 2023 updates with uh, everything that comes with that if you are interested in the pipeline stuff. Last but not least, we have Mari 7 support with extension pack right out from the bat. And that's going to be really great for companies that wants to adopt this early so you don't have to sit around and wait for the extension pack to be released.